yeah, maybe you can fill us in on that a bit more, both the big opportunity of these big public blockchains that can be analyzed, as well as something that makes it uh, tricky, <laughs> some bits that make it tricky. Well, there's always a caveat. It's the expression, the, the large print giveth and the small print taketh. But um, <laughs> with, with cryptocurrency and with blockchains in particular, the obvious use cases and opportunities that this data set represents are anyone can have access to the real-time data, not just the real-time data data, but also what's in what's called the mempool. So transactions not yet to be settled. Anyone can get access to a node and and publicly analyze this data. It's extremely powerful for uh, for for researchers. There's there's a lot of economic activity. Can you think of another real time economic data set that anyone can have access to? I used to work for the government and I would use year old survey data to mm. explain economic trends. We would all get so excited. Oh, a new survey is coming <laughs> out. It's from, but it's already a year old. And so the, the opportunities are huge. Now, the reason why I said that there are caveats is because this is a messy data set and it is full of noise. And sometimes you have trouble separating the signal from the noise. And I think that's probably true in any big data um, set, but I'll give you, I think maybe one or two examples of why that, of what that means in, in blockchain data. One example is that sometimes there might be a thousand transactions between different distinct wallets, but they're all actually a part of just one payment chain from one service to another. And just the technical quirk that has worked out is that they will be carrying out one transfer over across a thousand different wallets. So if you just parse the blockchain, that's going to look like a thousand different wallets, but that's not you know, a thousand units of economic value. But for me, increasingly, one thing that that I'm struggling with with the blockchain data is that a lot of I'm interested in economic questions. So what is driving people's behaviors? Why is blockchain activity going up? Why is it going down? What is the significance of this data? How do we interpret it? But there's also this a lot of transfers are just administrative transfers between exchanges that Mm -hmm. are things that are happening on their books that we're not privy to that information. So there might be a $700 million transfer into an exchange. Uh, It might just be them topping up their reserves and it's not actually Mm -hmm. economically meaningful or them moving their wallet, their money around. So that being said, this is still kind of early stages in this data. So Mm -hmm. again, the challenges present opportunities and there are these, there's this concept where, in a, in a bear market, you know, you put your head down and you build. And I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of different startups and companies excited by these problems, wanting to be the one to solve for these issues. So where is the signal? Where is the noise? And that's certainly one thing that Chainalysis does as a company is we identify services and we really try and reduce the amount of noise in the blockchain. But you know, when you're when you live in a, any single data set, some days are better than others when it comes to appreciating the value of your data. 